part of this um, Destiny Molding Conference, I want you to know that we are in for a blast. The Bible says one thing that differentiates the men of Isaacas is because they understand the signs of time. And for me to be preaching at this conference, talking about the relevant woman, I know there's something about you. God chooses his audience. He intentionally brought you to this platform today to be partaker of this great, great conference. You will know that everyone at the sound of my voice has a, an appointment with destiny. You have an appointment with purpose. You have an appointment with mandate. You have an appointment with the reason why you are here on earth. Because you are not here by accident. You are not a coincidence. I know a lot of people assume that, oh, Oh, she gave back to a woman. Oh, woman, what is it about her? But the beautiful thing is that the hand that rules the creed rules the world. Every woman is privileged to carry every man in their various womb. We are nurturers. From the womb to the tomb, a woman is relevant. From the womb to the tomb, a woman is relevant. I've seen people, even after the demis of their parents, they still go to their graveyard and say, Mommy, Dad, Mommy, please don't sleep. The destiny of my mother, please don't sleep in heaven. I'm sure some of you are relevant with that word. And that's why this year's conference, the relevant woman is so prophetic and profound. This is the best time to talk about being relevant for such a time as this. <laughs> this is the time. There's no best time to talk about the relevant woman than this time we are in, we are seriously in the perilous times. We are in a season where the love of a lot of people are waxing cold. People have given in to social media bad news. They are not even seeking God for his mind and his counsel anymore. What they are passionate about is the fact that things that goes on around them is the one that dictates their tune. I said tune intentionally. Dictates their mood. I said mood intentionally. Dictate the voice of God. They have listened to so much of the voices of their, of their opposition and they are actually losing their position. A lot of women are losing their positions because they keep listening to the voice of their opposition. Oh, the voice of opposition comes to say, no, you can't keep your marriage. Men are evil. Look at social -so story. You know, I can't be married. Let me just have be a baby mama. People are not hearing what God is saying anymore. So I'm appreciating my host for having it at the back of our mind by the voice of the Holy Spirit to bring forth this conference to a reality, the relevant woman. Now, we, I'm not, I always tell women, and hear me clearly, I don't envy any woman in the Bible. I live in a better dispensation. <laughs> they don't have the Holy Ghost, I have the Holy Ghost. They can't speak in tongues. I can speak in tongues of men and of angels. I have the privilege of the Bible. They don't have the Bible to read. And yet, despite the fact that they have no Bible to read, they don't have physical mentors, they don't have anybody to guide them and guard them, yet they led an outstanding life. I will be a waster of resources. I will be a reproach to God and to Calvary if I don't stand out stand up and be dynamic and be relevant and be unique in my generation it will be a waste and you know one thing i've told myself i don't know about you i do a lot of thinking because thinking makes a man i do a lot of thinking and i've asked myself several questions in my in the privacy of my life because i'm more of a thinker than an extrovert i'm 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 giving to details and i said to myself hmm if another bible is going to be written if they, if you know, you, uh, you agree with me that everybody that led their lives in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, Mary, Martha, Delilah, you know, Jezebel, Rispa, all of them never knew that the events of their lives are going to be recorded. The question I keep asking myself is simple if another Bible is going to be written, what are they going to put in front of my name? Would they say she begat? and begat and begat like Methuselah and she died? <laughs> or would they say she walked with God? Would they say she maximized potentials and gave back to everything that is on the inside of her? 
Would they say that she became so relevant that after her departure, she became an institution to be discovered? Are they going to study my life? Thank you for making mention of the Queen of England. This woman led a life of royalty. <laughs> she maximized her potentials. She was relevant, strong, dynamic, intentional, creative, sensitive, sensible, orderly, relational, dynamic. I'm sure she must have, in her days, she must have read the book of Esther back to back. Because she has the privilege of the Bible. And that is one woman that became relevant, relevant despite all odds. Having to lead men. Oh my goodness. That is, when, when, when I began to read about her, look at the comments people were given, I began to jump in my heart. My spirit jolted. Knowing fully well that she's a woman like me, she does not have two heads, I will be a re waster of resources. I'll be a scunderer of grace. I'll be an abuser of grace if I don't live extraordinary life, if I don't live an outstanding life, if I don't choose to be relevant in my generation. It will be unfair on Calvary. It will be unfair on Bible. It will be unfair on, on books. It will be unfair on the global village of information for me to live lesser than i'm created to and that's why it's important for every woman tonight at the sound of my voice to know that we are in for a blast tonight looking at the life of esther don't forget i will never pray god make me like esther esther is praying that she will be in my genealogy in my generation let me put it that way esther will be praying that god make me like in my generation there's no Bible, there's no body in the Bible. Please stop cursing yourself by saying, God, make me like Deborah, make me like Esther, make me like Ruth, make me like Anna. It's an abomination. You are insulting Calvary, asking God to make you like any woman that had led her life in the Old Testament. You are a waster of resources. That's the truth. Now, the point is, if these women that we are taking their notes today, starting from the book of Esther, if they can be so unique, so relevant against all odds. They don't have the Bible. They don't have books. They don't have tapes. They don't have anything. And yet, generations unborn, listen to me, if you tear the book of Esther out of your Bible, it is still in my Bible. There are so many women that became relevant against all odds that Esther to me is just one of. Ha, one woman. I'm talking about the relevant woman. One woman looked at Jesus and said, what am I going to do to be relevant? To be relevant in the life of Jesus. She packaged one year salary. Some of you to give is a problem. I'm coming to that. She gave one year salary. Broke it, wasted it. And there was a reaction. Where did you waste it? It should have been sold. It's a year salary. She broke the alabaster box of ointment. You know what that means? You get something, it's an ointment, it's a fragrance that, that outlives you. You don't finish, you don't use it to, to the end. That outlives you. You now look at one man who called himself Jesus. You know, I'm quoting that. And you choose to smash it on the floor and use it to watch his feet. No wonder. The Bible said there was indignation. There was reaction. There was anger. There was rage. And Jesus said, wait. For me, you don't have all the time. You will always have the poor. Wherever this Bible is being preached, this woman will be relevant. Tear the name of Mary from your Bible. It's still in my Bible. Now, you know the mystery behind her relevance. Everybody needs the anointing to do what they are doing. I'm still going to be talking about that. Your relationship with God. Everybody needs the anointing to perform. You don't have the anointing. You are not, and your, your, your ministry your and your calling will become annoyance you need anointing you need the power of god which is the anointing of the holy spirit to do whatever you are called to do and guess what jesus needed jesus needed the anointing to go to the cross and mary 
had to key in to be relevant at that crucial moment. Imagine. If, can you imagine Jesus not relevant or being useful at the cross? Just picture the scriptures. Now, let me say this to every woman at the sound of my voice. Spiritual negligence is costly. You don't know what you are doing to your generation, to your genealogy, to the children born and unborn if you refuse to be relevant in your life. Hmm. I don't, that, that should scare someone here. I should, you, should be, you should be shivering. You should be afraid. Ask a question. Just picture the scriptures. Picture the life of Mary. Jesus needed the anointing to go to the cross. Somebody was anointing. That was what he said. This woman, Mary, is anointing me for my burial. Haha. <laughs> that is scary. Meaning that the purpose and the mandate of Jesus would have been truncated if that woman was not relevant. If that woman did not key into purpose. If that woman did not do what she had to stretch herself to do. She had to go out of the norms. She had to go out of the, the routine. You know, a lot of us, we don't, have to, we, don't, we, we don't want to leave the status quo. We want to still, I am this, my husband, my children, my Christian life, let me go to heaven, and all of that. But people that will be relevant in their generation, they have to go out of their way. They have to make up their minds. They are not going to go with the norms. They are not going to live in, with their lives, you know, with a status quo. That's how we used to do it in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Ghost, forever. Amen. They, you can't live like that. That was what made her relevant. And Jesus said, wherever this Bible is preached, her name will be mentioned for life. That woman alone hey, made me to know that if you are not relevant as a woman, it's a women's conference. If you are not relevant in your life, in the, now, you know, I didn't say in your husband's life. I'm talking about you. It's all about you first. I tell people often, if you are going to give me a cloth, I will look at the one you are wearing. I've changed my slogan. I will check your wardrobe if you did not borrow that clothes to party. You cannot give what you don't have. And that is why it's so important for you, for me to start with you, you. Listen to me, ladies in the house. It is easy for a woman to run mad. Most women are using antidepressants. I deal with addiction. I deal with people that have emotional baggages. So I know what I'm talking about. A lot of women, they're in a mental home today. My husband, my husband, my children, children, husband. That is what they are screaming and yelling. They don't know that life is personally, life is essentially a personal adventure. Life is personal. That is why when you have it, they say, she's this. Because life identifies you. The beautiful thing about life is very simple. Until you achieve it, it's not your own. And life does not award a failure. I'm intentionally talking about life because I'm taking you somewhere today. As a relevant woman, your life, your relationship with God is more important than anything hear me today we are living in a world that is chaotic we are living in a world that is full of deception lies everywhere it takes a woman it takes a man I appreciate all the men in the house it takes a woman and a man that has traveled in broad Having a relationship with God to be able to see what is happening now. Because, listen, the love of many are waxing cold. People are no longer feeling the, the spirit. When we gave our lives to Christ almost 40 years ago, we go to the altar call shedding tears, crying under the convicting power of the Holy Spirit. In these days, People chew gum to the altar. They gum in church. Because the, from the pew to the pulpit, the, the, mid, the life of Jesus in them is dead or watered down. The power, the venom, the zest, the enthusiasm has gone off records, low, 
of his, he has frizzled out. That's the word I'm looking for. Now, let's look at what made Esther relevant because we are we have a Bible text that we're looking into. Esther became relevant because the dimension of divinity was strong in her. Now, listen to me in life, hear this, and it's a word of wisdom. You can never, never learn the secret of success from a successful man. You can only learn the secret of success from a failure. A man that is privileged to have succeeded in his or her life, in a vocation, in any business, whatever the person is doing, you can never, never learn from the person. Because by the time you are trying to celebrate the success of the person, trying to say, oh, wow, you are doing great. This is good of you. How, what, tell me the secret. How did you make it? You know what the person will say? It's God. It's God that did it. Because the moment you begin to share the privileged things you have achieved, the, the, the award that life has given to you, you will be afraid to be arrogant and be proud. So what you will just do simply is to say it is God. In humility, it's God that did it. I, do, I didn't do anything. But you want to understand the dynamics of success. Check someone that has failed. So all of you that are looking for, oh, let me go on the internet. How this person is successful? What made him think? Look at the look. Look at what he's achieving. Look at the fleet of cars. Excuse me. A successful man can never teach you success. You learn the secret of success from a failure. So a lot of people does not even know what made Esther think. And we're going to look at it tonight. What made her relevant? What made her a special species, an uncommon commodity? What made her rare as a gem? What made her different? So many things. I'm praying for someone at the sound of my bowels today that you are going to live your life in such a way that after your departure, your generation will want to know what made you think. Because they will go to the archives of your life Go to the nook and the crannies of your destiny and ask questions. How did she do it? Does she have 20 heads? Is it true she went through all of this? And of course, records will prove. Testimonies will prove that truly she went through that and she survived. What was the secret of Esther? Relevant woman and her God. You will know how strong Esther is. Or was you know I don't like using words for the patriarch because by the reason of the scriptures their life is still living they are still relevant the first thing that happened to her clearly was when her uncle came I'm still going to talk about her mentor her relationship when her uncle came and said Esther hmm, you don't understand a decree has been made over the Jews go and read the book of Esther it's not much go and read it and meditate on it Huh. You don't understand. A letter has been written to kill all the Jews. And one thing is sure. You are not in the kingdom for yourself. A lot of people, a lot of us, we felt, oh, we are in the kingdom just to make money. Especially some of you that are outside the country. You pay bills, you go use credit card. That is not the essence of life. Do you know? Every one of us. We are going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ to be awarded. I've sat down to ask myself, are they going to award me by the fleet of cars I have? Or how full my wardrobe is? Or the amount of whatever, I don't even know what is relevant again. Or the certificates. If whatever you are doing, or whatever you have become, is not expanding the kingdom, you are a waster of destiny, resources, and you're a colossal failure. Please note it in your heart. If whatever you have achieved, maybe you have become the self, you have gotten your second professor, whatever she, you are a doctor, you are a lawyer, you are a banker, you have a good job, you are a nurse, you are a midwife, and your money rolls in in dollars, in pounds, in euros, and you are feeling fly. Excuse me, if it's not adding to the kingdom of God, you are a most man miserable. When Uncle told her and said, Esther, hmm. I don't have problems with you being comfortable in the palace. But if you think you are here for yourself, 
you are joking. You don't even know. The reason why the eunuch preferred you, the reason why a lot of women went for the beauty competition and they were doing figure eight, they were wriggling, they were showing off, and the king did not look at them. The king did not prefer them. Do you know the reason why the eunuch prefers you and gave you the secret of the king? I want everyone hearing the sound of my voice today to go back to the archives of their lives and look at the victories and be prophetic now. Look at the victories that God has won for you. Look at how you passed that exam. Look at how you scaled through that about to death situation. The doctor gave you the prognosis. You beat it by prophetic help, by divine hand. That was why Uncle Mordecai told Esther, you don't understand the victories you want. Being in the palace today is not because you are strong. It's not because you know how to pray. It's not because of anything. Probably God has put you in that place for such a time as this. Ha! Listen to me. She said, her God. She said, now, all of you, go and fast. I will fast also, and my maid will fast with me. That is deep, solid. Let me break it down. Esther was in the palace, comfortable. The king is at her beck and call. She had maids. She had stewards. She had servants that worked with her and worked for her. And she said, I will not fight this battle alone. I have people around me. What is the strength of your relationship? Who are the people you are relating with? How committed, how faithful, how loyal. Some of you, if you say good morning is good midnight, you have problems with integrity. When you greet somebody is good morning, they will go back and check, is it midnight or morning? You are a professional, a pathological liar because you want to cover up. We're going to talk about that tomorrow, not today. We're going to look at the roots, the foundation of this thing. That made you to be dancing to a music you don't know is playing the rhythm. Guess what? She said, I am my maiden, solid woman of relationship. Now, we fast. Her relationship with God, her relationship, oh my goodness, with people. Listen to me. A lot of us, we don't understand the dynamics of relationship. And I will tell you a little. Then I'll go back to her relationship with her mentor. Then I'll close. Let's start with God. If she was a spiritual dwarf, or spiritually malnutrited, or spiritually quashokot, can I say the truth to every woman at the sound of my voice? A woman is an altar of intercession in her home. Hmm. You need to understand what I'm saying. A woman is an altar of intercession in her home. Do you know, if they get to somebody's home now, if you get to your house, to your living room, and the house is unkept, everything is upside down, the question will not be, is there no man in this house? What are you going to say? Are there no woman in this house? Meaning that a man is the head of the home. I agree. But the spirit of a woman rules that home. It is your spirit that rules the home. You are the one that determines the strength, the length, the breadth, the wideness, the longevity, the progress, the achievement of your home from your husband to your children. Even if you marry a wrong man, let us assume, I'm going to be talking about that tomorrow. Even if you marry a narcissist, a sociopath, a psychopath that has personality disorder, listen to me. If you understand the dynamics of what I'm saying, nobody will do, be able to live without you. Your relevance will be obvious and be conspicuous. <laughs> Look at Vasti. Let us assume that her husband was a party freak. She'll be somebody is Esther. <laughs> you are not getting me this evening. I hope you, you are getting my spirit. I don't know my time. When is my time to close? Let me know. Can be here for another two hours. Because there's something that is bubbling in my soul for this conference. Vasti, let us mad agree that Queen Ahiseros was a drunk addict, was a drunkard, was an addict, 
was a party free. If somebody would do party for three months, he was doing party different. They were describing the goblets, the glass cups, the things he was using to, 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 to throw his party. Expensive wine. Expensive lifestyle. And yet, <laughs> one woman, two car, handled him rather, pardon me, handled him like, like nothing. Because in every king, there's a kid. Don't tell me it is my marriage. There's no reason. If you fail, it's your fault. There's no reason for any woman to fail. Hear me. Because the Bible says those who know their God, they shall be strong and do exploits. You have what it takes. You have the capacity. You have the capability. You have the resiliency. You have the gods. And of course, you have God. Esther said, don't worry. I'll fast. But I have enough solid network. Hear me as a woman. If you are hearing the sound of my voice today and you are not a relational person, change now. You can't live alone. You, there's no one that wins the battle of her life. That wins the battle of her life. That wins it isolatively. We win as a team. It is the teamwork that makes the dream of your victory to be won. I think somebody should note that. It is a teamwork. She could have been very, very comfortable, happy, whatever. Well, uncle, leave me alone. I don't, I don't think I have energy for this. My husband is not available. He's going to be alone. And you know what? She would have given alibis, excuses. I know there are lots of you hearing me now. Come to church is excuse tight you start arguing tight with god now when titan has nothing to do with the new testament or the old testament titan was in the covenant when god gave them the covenant in exodus dictaronomy exodus tight is not a new covenant or an old covenant thing even one tenth of your of your ink of your crops goes to god but now <laughs> You are the part of the people that when they are gossiping, abusing men of God, insulting men of God, you are the one that keeps commenting. You are digging your grave. That's not for today. Maybe another conference. Because a lot of people are operating under an unknown curse and they don't know. And they thought they are living well. You know why? The painful part of it is that most of the time we forget the seed we have sown. We are just seeing strange things. Our children on drawers. They are taking marijuana. They are living a bad life. Thank you. Tight is not a negotiable subject. It is not negotiable. It's a covenant work. You give it, you don't give it. God cannot be hungry. Excuse me. But that's not where I'm going. Let me focus on, on this woman and her relationship. She was so solid. Her relationship with God, she, said, she was too confident. You know what brought her confidence in? Because I think I'm running out of time. I don't know how many minutes I have more. But the, one of the things that brought her confidence out is because she knows her God. Listen to me, ladies in the house. I'm going back on God intentionally. I'm going to talk about God, her relationship of, with people, and of course with her mentor. But let me say this. Listen to me. It's only God you have. Oh. Every other ground will sink you. <laughs> you need to ask me my story. Every other ground will sink you. On Christ, the solid rock, I stand. All other ground is a sinking sand. Thank you. All other ground is a sinking sand. Sand. Every ground will sink you. Hey, if your husband is, oh, my husband, my husband and husband, if anything happens, God forbid you will not be a widow. But if that man goes, what happens? And you know God, you know, I love the scriptures. The Bible says all the things that are shakable will be shaken. It's not the thing, the only thing that will stand is something that is not shakable. And listen to me, you get to a place, even Jesus was shaking to his marrow. He said, God, I wish this cup would pass over, over me. That is shaking. He went back to God. Now, don't tell me, okay, you know what? Everything will be fine. Excuse me. Prayer, your relationship with God, hear me today. Your relationship with God is an investment. There is no way you will put money in the bank and you will not withdraw with your PIN number. 
a lot of women, they are not related with God. So when there's a problem, they are not looking for a way out. God has become a sugar daddy. Has become, you know, the person you go when there's a problem. Listen to me. You must have a working, consistent relationship with Jesus, with God, through Jesus. Because I, I may be having mixed audience. A working, please, I'm choosing my words. A working, consistent relationship with God. It has to be consistent. Simple, quiet time. I wake up 3 a.m. I don't have any reason for living. I'm not reading to preach. I've not looked at notes. I'm living with Jesus to live. I don't read to preach. I read to live. When I'm privileged to preach, I'm belching. I'm just, you know, when you drink water, you eat a lot of food, you belch. I've never sat down in my life to say, oh, because I want to preach, let me now be reading. No, I'm a child of God. If I have fellowship, I remember several years ago, I was trusting God for the future. She's the, your host said she met me almost 15, 20 years ago in London. Meaning that it has been like this. And I told God, I said, God, I want to be great. I want to be great. And he told me clearly, if a leaf is close to the soap, the leaf becomes soapy. That is in my language. You know, God speaks to us in a language we understand. If a leaf gets close to the soap, that leaf will become soapy. A connection with me we make you relevant in life. Sincerely speaking, as you are looking at me, I'm not in a clique. I'm a one-woman gang. I've written 64 books. My story is all over the place. Tonight is not for the story. I don't have the connection. I don't have the people. I don't have anybody. But when you have God, you have everything. David said, Unto you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. Oh my God, I trust in you. Let me not be ashamed. Let not my enemies triumph over me. You become relevant with your relationship with God. Listen, some of you are playing games. Ah, you know, ah, kingdom politics. I'm not a politician. Ask your host. I've told her, clear. Because I will not be political with you and lose my peace. It's not possible. <laughs> because if you sack me today, so if God asks me, you can't pay my bills. You can't pay my bills. So I am not going to impress you and get depressed. It takes someone that understands the relationship she has with God that will make her to know I am not serving him anyhow. I am relating with him. He's my friend. Remember what God said to Miriam when he was backbiting her mentor, Moses. Now, people have problems. I'm going to talk about mentoring shortly. People have problems with age when it comes to mentoring. Excuse me, we can be age mates, we are not grace mates. You can be as old as Methuselah. When it comes to work with God, we work with God with the privilege we have in the capacity he turns himself to us. So if I'm privileged to be working with God for maybe since I was five years old, and I'm, not, I'm going to be 60 next year, August 7 is my birthday, now, I'm going to be 60. I what we got from age 5 to 60. Meaning that 55 years of my life, I've related with God. You cannot compare my relationship with, your relationship with God with someone that came in 5 years ago. So if a, 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 a 10 year old child has been consistently working with God and is now 60, the work with God cannot be played off. It's not possible. It can't be played off. Now, let's go back to her work with God. Her work with God was too sure and solid that when Uncle Mordecai, her uncle, brought the reality of what is going to happen. And you know, one thing that I love a lot is so clear. Uncle Mordecai, I'm mixing everything now. Her mentor, her week, going into in and out of mentoring, came headlong. Can I say this about mentoring? I've talked about relationship with people. I'm going to still bring some things out that I saw in the life of this relevant woman. Don't don't forget, she's not. I'm not. I don't pray to be like Esther. I have a better privilege on this earth. 
I don't pray to be like her, no. She would have wished him she's in my days with Holy Ghost. Madebra la gaboso kotolobo jala balandele bostaya megadia bosote. If she could energize her spirit and give it fire, she would have wished to be here more. And despite space crisis, there's still book of Esther. Some women showed up against all odds. Queen of England showed up against all odds. Don't waste resources as you are hearing me today. You know one thing Uncle Modica, a mentor did to her. She did some, he did something. Your mentor is an alarm clock that wakes you up. Do you know, if not for Mordecai, speaking to her life, there was no way Esther would have been relevant in life. Hear me from the beginning. Don't forget, Esther means a star, Adassa. I'm going to be talking about pain and other things tomorrow. She lost her dad, she lost her mom. She was at the mercy of her uncle and the wife and the children. That tells you something. She's not going to have lunch at the same time with other kids. She's an orphan. She's not going to eat what they are eating. She, probably she's eating leftovers. I'm going to deal with issues and pain tomorrow. Meaning that she let obedience by the reason of what she suffered under her uncle mentor. Sometimes your mentor can torment you. Sometimes your mentor will treat you as if you are not going to and you are not going to become great. It takes wisdom to discern that this thing that my mentor is doing to me. Maybe you are living with your pastor, you are talking with your pastor, you are a worker in church, and your pastor keeps you know coming at you. You should do this, do that. Don't say, ah, what is it? Ah, we are all in England. Excuse me. You are, you are paying bills, you are paying bills, you are, you, are, you are paying your rent, I'm paying my rent. Excuse me. This is destiny. Destiny has nothing to do with location. Please take it clearly. Destiny, purpose, has nothing to do with location. Because a lot of us, we mix things up. We don't understand the dynamics of, of God at all. So we assume that, ah, I remember several years ago, let me make you laugh. I was in England. And um, one of my daughters, spiritually, I'm talking about mentoring, brought a gift, you know, brought food for me or something. And I told, I just prayed for her. Your mentor will pray for you. You will pray back for your mentor. Your mentor will, mentor will pray for you. You say, and you too. Don't worry. I've taken my prayer back. Hmm. I just told her, I said, you will not be hungry. You know how she answered me? The spirit of UK has entered her. She said, she said, we are in London. Do you know? It got to a stage. I'm telling you a true life story. It got to a stage that this girl was begging for one pound to eat in England. When she should have taken advantage of the prophetic word and say amen with thunder and fire. Because, I, I, of course, I was a mentor. She, she was in her church before she traveled out. She just said, we're in London. I said, we're in London. You don't know that the race is not to the swift. The battle is not to the strong. Times and tragedies happens to them all. She does not know the dynamics of battle of life. When you see war, when you see serious battle, you will, you will, you know, I, I notice a lot of people are so arrogant. They are arrogant, especially the younger generation, young ones. They are too full of themselves. They can talk to anybody. They can be rude to anybody. They can show attitude to anybody. Guess what? Because they have not seen trouble. When you are, you have, you have seen trouble, you are old. And you have seen challenges. Challenges will humble you. So when I see those young, young children that are always everywhere, gallivanting around the town, speaking grammar, I just laugh. I say, you, I give you some time. Marry, have children. And you will see where there's trouble. Then you know how to bow and humble yourself. Uncle Mordecai would have made Esther like a slave. Of course, she's an orphan. She doesn't have anybody to say anything to her, to even feel her pain. You know how we, our house helps. Whether they are having headache, they are having uh, menstrual pain, you give them an adjustic if you can. They, they look for an adjustic themselves because they know they are not going to be paid if they don't work. That was how Esther was. But you know what? The Bible did not say that Uncle Mordecai was a barren man. He had children. But he has studied the life of Esther. He has looked at the life of this girl and she knew that this girl, his Humble. 
teachable, to mentoring. She knew, he knew, pardon me, he knew that this girl, if I made her to go to the palace and tell her, don't say you are a Jew or a Jewish or Jewish or you are from the Jew land or whatever. You understand what I'm trying to say? When I get to this level, don't mind my grandma anymore. Guess what? She said, this girl, I trust. He said, I trust this girl. I trust her. Because I've trained her. She has responded to training. That was why in the first place, Esther was presented for the beauty competition. The Bible did not say that Mordecai does not have children. She must have, she must have had a male or and female children, but they are used to their dad. The problem a lot of people have about mentoring is that we get used to grace. We get used to the mentor. Why? You know their weaknesses. Let me come, let me come back a little bit. When is my time? Let me know. Guess what? <laughs> Ruth. In Ruth chapter 1 verse 15. The mother-in-law of Ruth said, go back and meet your God and your people. She said, I'm not going back. She followed. The Bible said when she, she became relevant, when she was steadfastly minded. But that's not where I'm going. Something happened. Clearly. She just said, Mommy, now that we are here, Ruth chapter 2 verse 2. And we are starving. There's no food. We are hungry. Common sense. Do you know that this generation does not even use their initiative in the name of familiarity? Use their initiative. They don't care anymore. Because the Bible says something. I read the scriptures that shocked me. It said when a slave become a wife, she starts misbehaving. Somebody that, that never thought it was going to be anything, now you are somebody. You, your head is swollen. May your head not be bigger than the crown that God wants to put on your head. Somebody should say amen to that. The Bible says in Ruth chapter 3 verse 1. In Ruth chapter 2 verse 2, she went to do odd jobs. To take leftovers. Her job. In Ruth chapter 3 verse 1, the mother-in-law said, Shall I not seek rest for you, my daughter? That is the power of mentoring. Your mentor is the ladder to your next level. To be relevant. <laughs> If you don't have a mentor, the devil will torment you. There is somebody here. There is somebody that has to just be humble enough so that you will not stumble. Because if you are not humble, you will stumble. A lot of men and women are stumbling over some assaulting in destiny. Why? Because they are not humble. Everybody is their mate. They can speak English. They know better than their mother. Listen and father, hear me today. <laughs> There's an adage that says, that if you have one million clothes in your wardrobe, the rags that your old people have, you can't have it. You know why? That rag is experience. That rag is what they see that you don't see. Uncle Mordecai just said, Esther, go to the king. Just go there. And when you are there, don't worry. Just make sure you don't declare, declare your identity. She said, yes, uncle. Yes, uncle. You know, when you are mentored and you are saying, yes, daddy, yes, mommy, okay, ma, okay, sir, okay, I will do it. You don't know that you are clearing road for yourself. You are, your heaven is, heaven is dancing around your life. Because listen to me, even Jesus submitted himself to John the Baptist to be mentored. <laughs> that is Jesus. He bent down and made heaven open. And said, baptized me. John the Baptist said, no, I, I, I can't do it. He said, no, suffer it to be now. Until Jesus bowed to mentoring hey, of his parents. He started with his mom and his dad. For, you don't forget, they went somewhere. And for three days, Jesus was missing. And they came back and rebuked Jesus. They rebuked Jesus. I'm talking about Jesus now. They said, where did you go? For three days, we didn't see you. The Bible says he came back and submitted himself to them. To his parents. That's Jesus. So some of us are bigger than Jesus. <laughs> yes, daddy. Yes, mommy. Yes, ma. Okay, ma. With a heart of humility, your, your future is beautiful and colorful. It's a matter of time. Let There's no devil. Listen to me. Listen to me clearly this evening. Do you know that there's no demon? Look at what Jesus said to Peter. 
Peter, Jesus was mentor, Peter's mentor. He said, the devil has come to deal with you, but I've prayed for you. Finish. Let them do whatever they like. When you are even doing spiritual warfare, and the devil is attacking you headlong, get a mentor that is relevant. And listen to me, most of the time, let me go back to Ruth. Do you know that hmm, the pain, the failure of Naomi was enough for Ruth to say, I, mean, I don't follow this one, no. I can't follow this kind of vehicle, no. but she was discerning. To be relevant, you must be smart and discerning. Tomorrow, I'll be telling you more things. Listen to me. You need to understand, even if it, there is a season in the life of your mentor that is going through stuff, see, don't know any man in the flesh. The Bible says, henceforth, know no man in the flesh. A lot of people get to enter trouble spiritually because they will just size up a mentor and start looking for another mentor. And let me be honest with you, when you start looking for another mentor, you can never, never be relevant in the life of that mentor that you are looking for because you are violating spiritual order. The Bible says we produce after our, after our kind. There's always someone that is prophetically in your bowels, in your prophetic bowels. You don't get there, you don't connect there, you are losing. And you can't blame God. Have you ever asked a question? I told you, I'm a student of the Bible. I don't know any other thing than the word of God. Have you ever asked yourself a question? If Hannah had insulted Eli that day and said, excuse me, you are telling me I'm drunk. I'm talking about mentoring. Who is speaking to your life? Who is prophesying your future to you? Who is giving you your womb, your baby? Who is opening your womb? Who is opening your spiritual womb, psychological womb, financial womb? Who is giving you rest in your home? Who is somebody in your life that is speaking your destiny to reality? Who? You know what happened that day? <laughs> Sometimes I look at the scriptures and I'm shaking. I'm just shaking. Oh God. The Bible says that for Ruth, he said, I will seek rest for you. And that rest came. He met Boaz. Do you know that Boaz was never married? Tia Roba, clean man. <laughs> A woman that was barren for 10 years. Daddy enjoy marriage for 10 years. Her husband was sickly. Sickly, wasting away. And she was able to jump out and become relevant because she understood the dynamics of mentoring. There was no way Ruth would have followed Naomi if she knew him in the flesh. Most of the people that are mentoring you, that are going to take you to the next level, they are not perfect. They are frail. Thank you. They are frail. They are people that, when you look at them, you are wondering. Ah, even your mates. Look at Opa. As a matter of fact, the painful part of this story of Ruth and Naomi was, her mother-in-law told her, excuse me, girl, go back. Girls, leave me. I don't have a husband now. Even if I have a husband now, they can't be old enough for you to marry. This is the reality of your life. Ah, she said, you don't understand. I know what future holds for me. I am not knowing you in the flesh. It's not even going to be fear. Let me go back to relationship and close. It's not going to be fear for me to leave you like this. At least, let me follow you. And you know what? She did not say follow God. God was last. That is the strength of relationship. With people, with mentors. People relate because of one thing for purpose and destiny and you have to be a man or a woman of the spirit to relate in that light I know that what brought me here what pushed me here it has nothing to do with uh, maybe by it's not by association, it's destiny have you ever sat down to ask a question in your life that if oh god if Ruth had not followed Naomi, she can never be in the book of life. If Esther had not said to Uncle Mordecai, I'll go and fast. You know the insult? Oh my God. You know some people cannot take insult anymore because they are now, they are now big. 
your mentor has a right to say anything to you in the spirit of love, in the spirit of mentoring, in the spirit of agape, the love of God. He said, come, come, come. You are giving me clothes to you. I'm not wearing nonsense clothes. You might be comfortable now. You think you're in the kingdom. <laughs> if you dare keep quiet at the time like this, that God has put you in the kingdom, help will come for the Jews. Do you know that it's only God that is indispensable? God has one million and one of you that will show up from somewhere. It's only God that is indispensable. You know what she said? She said, come, come, come. Uncle Mordecai said, come, come, come. You think you are comfortable here? You don't know the spirit of his, what is going on in the atmosphere. I've been in this land. I know what the I know what Haman and his wicked people has done to the Jews. I know several times I don't have to bow. They want me to bow. I know what is going on. So here, here is not a place where you will mess things up. If you keep quiet, help will come for the Jews. Who, will, who, who would have known that God has put you in the kingdom for such a time like this? She woke up. I told you what the mentor does is to wake you up to walk. It's to wake you up to destiny. It's to wake you up to purpose. You are listening to me now. Every one of you, right? Whatever part of the world you are listening to me, hear me today. You are not relating in mentoring by coincidence, by accident. It is destiny that brought you here. If Esther had said, ah, ah, uncle, kilo day, what? Sorry for speaking English. I know I'm having conference in England. What is it? Leave me alone. Please leave me alone. You can't be talking to me like that. You need to, you need to be, be decent. Pride destroys every human being. Pride goes before a fall. If you are not humble, you will stumble. You can't be talking to me like this. Ah, there's, there's a limit to every woman endurance. Not a problem. Uncle has said it. He has, he has said his own. He has gone. Because uncle, you know, when you are being mentored, you are talking about her God her relationship and her mentors. Hear me. When you have a mentor, your mentor is your cover. They prayer cover you. The spiritual cover you. The cycle, every cover. They are covering you. And uncle said, wait. Maybe I was the one that introduced you to the king. You are not comfortable, Abby. Don't worry. If you shut up at this season of your life, help will come to the Jews. And listen, help will come. And you know what she said? Uncle, just go and fast for me. I will also fast. And I go to the king. If I perish, I perish. That is a relevant woman. They don't perish. They don't perish. They come out stronger. They become relevant. They become an outstanding voice in their generation. They don't perish. I will come back tomorrow. Tomorrow is the second day of this conference. Tomorrow I will let you see some things about us, Esther. Before we go into dealing with issues. Esther said, you need to understand me, where I am now. <laughs> I'll go. And when you hear people that are properly mentored and covered, they go. They go. They go. The journey will be smooth. Because they are covering you. They are monitoring you. You know what Elisha said to Elijah or Elisha said to Geazi? Can't you know that my spirit is following you? That's the beauty of mentoring. Their spirit follows you. And listen to me. I've said it before and I'm saying it again. Most of the time, those mentors have things that you can say about their lives that does not look like it. It takes wisdom for Ruth to look at mommy Mordecai. I mean, mommy, mommy, uh, what's the name of the wife now? The mother. The wife, the mother of, um, the, the, the name of the, I've forgotten. It went off my head. It will come back. Ruth would have said to Naomi, ah. Truly, there's witchcraft in you. You must be a witch. You want, you want my life destroyed. I don't want. I'm going. That's, that's, she has reason to call her a witch. Her first husband has died. The Holy Spirit brought it back. Her husband died. Her two children have died. How do you call a woman? What else are you going to call a woman? She's a witch. She has, the two of them have died. So that was why she said, the Almighty God has beaten me black and blue. I'm bitter. Don't call me sweet. Call me Mara. She also does not know what she carried that in this bowl, well, the remaining leftover, have you asked yourself, I forgot and the Holy Spirit brought it back. I will say this in closing tonight. Have you ever sat down to ask if Hannah, I'm coming back to Hannah, then I'll close with that, the, the team of the conference. If Hannah, same Hannah, has said to Eli, what is wrong with you? 
What is it? You are telling me I'm drunk in the morning. Mentoring. Why, why are you insulting me? Can't you see that I've been coming to this Shiloh for this every year conference and I've, 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 not, I've not had my child? Please. Go and manage your marriage yourself. You don't have a home. Your wife, your children are sleeping with everybody stealing the money on the altar. Please go. Excuse me. You know what she said? I forgot the scriptures that came back to me. I know that word today is for someone. He said, Daddy, the man said you are drunk in the morning. She said, Daddy, I can't be drunk. I'm a woman of a sorrowful spirit. I'm pouring my heart to the Lord. I'm pouring my heart to the Lord. I am not drunk. I'm not drunk. This is a season of my life that God has promised me Life is beating me hard. Pelina is peppering me. Can you just do something? And Eli, look for the bottom part of the anointing. Scrape the, the basest part of the oil. Imagine, that anointing was there to give Hannah her child. There's something about mentoring that you must not play with. In this new, especially in this generation, where mentors are just hanging and frizzling out in the life of people because they felt they can learn it by themselves. They can't. That's not how life is. And guess what shocked me? And I've meditated on that scriptures again and again and again. Do you know, if Hannah did not do that with Uncle Mordecai, I mean, sorry, going back to Eli, the prophet, if Hannah did not say that unto prophet Eli, Guess what would have happened? Hannah would have gone to heaven without a child. Her God, her relationships, and her mentors, the relevant woman. Her God, her relationship, and her mentors. Hannah would have made heaven. And probably when we are watching the movie of the life of Hannah, because all of us are living a script. I've told you, I've not said it in this meeting. I'll say it tomorrow. Our lives is being documented in a script. And if they now read my life story and say, Ah, Funke missed that opportunity. He missed that impartation. He missed that passing down the button. He missed the grace. Oh, grace missed. He would have gotten to heaven without a child. And heaven will say, What are you saying? We arrange a child through a useless vessel, quote and unquote. Through a man that has lost the grace, that has that is fat. You know, it would have been you are fat. All of you are you are eating everything on the altar. She said, No, daddy, I'm not drunk. The man of God said, We are take. Take you according to the time of life. Power of mentoring. I will you will come back with an amazing and outstanding testimonies, and your story will change. Spiritual negligence can be extremely costly. I'm just praying for someone tonight that is hearing my heart, speaking from the bowels of grace and the unction of God, that you will not miss your prophetic season, your prophetic moment. There is a normal timing, the timing, there's a prophetic timing, there's a cosmos moment, there's a kairos moment. You will not miss your kairos moment. You will not miss the timing of God for your life. You'll be so relevant. I need to pray for some people tonight. The Lord said to me, there are a few people here tonight. You've been battling. As a matter of fact, you've been having dreams back and forth. You just know that you are not where you're supposed to be. I stand in the grace of God today. I push your destiny forward in the name of Jesus. The Lord said to me, you have stayed on this mountain long enough. You are going forward. From the east, from the south, from the north, from the south, from the west. The hand of God that brings relevance. We bring relevance to you in the name of Jesus. The enemy will not exact upon you anymore. By the reason of this conference, the relevant woman, you'll be relevant in your generation. You'll be relevant in this generation. Your name will be heard. Your voice will be echoed. You will not die on song. You will not be buried on monk and on mon. That will be your testimonies in the name of Jesus. So that woman that is looking for the fruit of the womb, let your womb be open. Effort.
let your womb be opened in the name of Jesus. You are not going to die this time next year. If as this conference is coming up, you will look for a way to share your testimony of a baby boy that your word will celebrate in the name of Jesus. For that woman that is diagnosed cancer, they said you had cancer. They said you had cancer. I stand in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In the authority of the word of God, let the roots, the foundation, the, the fountain of that cancer die in the name of Jesus. What they said, they said is, is, is cervical cancer. I don't know the name, but I know know a name that is above every other name and at the name of jesus every knee should bow that cervical diagnosis i crush the power over your life in the name of jesus the lord said to me there's a woman here they have set you up for surgery because of fibroid i destroyed the fountain of that blood in the name of jesus dry up in the name of the lord of hosts thank you precious holy spirit there's a man here they are just insisting that is I near they are still not sure you know you have this pain in your in your scrotum I stand in the prophetic grace today and I decree healing to your soul to your body receive your restoration in the name of Jesus the Bible says surely he bore our grief he carried away our sorrows the chastisement of our peace was upon him and by his stripes we were healed I speak over that 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 what do they call it now that I near die let the fountain die in the name of the lord of hosts there's a woman here your son you just notice that your son is taking drugs he just he's just withdrawing i go to the root of that affliction i uproot it in the name of the lord of hosts the enemy will not exert upon you because you are a partaker of this conference today restoration healing in the name of the lord of hosts and so shall it be thank you precious lord i need to stop i know i'm i've taken like Four more minutes out of your time. I apologize. Thank you, thank you so much for allowing me to be thank part you, of this Lord. conference. I am so, thank so grateful. You, thank, thank you for thank inviting me. Thank you. Thank you.